Hi there. Welcome. Uh, for this month's Art Lover video, August's Art, Art Lover video, I am going to talk about Daisy. And I actually have uh, 16 process uh, shots that I shot as I was doing her. I see, it's a good example for how I seesaw light and dark and go back, so we'll work through those later. But um, let me just tell you a little bit about Daisy. Uh, she is a Sumatran orangutan that I met in 2006 in the Sedgwick County Zoo in Wichita, Kansas. And, you know, I didn't think much about orangs one way or the other before I started doing my zoo visits. But, my God, they have won me over. I mean, they're just an odd looking creature with this blue skin and this orange hair and these really long arms. But then if you spend any time with them, they are so clearly sentient and they engage with you and they are funny. <laughs> and they, um, uh, they're so clearly intelligent. And there's all these great orangutan stories. And then the way they move is the most amazing thing. Although Daisy didn't move very much. She was, she was pretty much Lazy Daisy when I met her. Um, Daisy was, is the mother to Kanali. Uh, she was apparently a terrible mother. So Kanali, who um, was raised by his grandmother, who was no longer alive when I arrived at the zoo, and also by his dad. Usually the fathers don't have much to do with the with the young in the wild so much, but that can change. And, and his dad, Panji, is a great dad and plays with him all the time. And Daisy could care less. Um, and they have recently, since I left, brought in another orang, a female that can breed with Panji and maybe and hopefully be a good mother. And she'll just be off in the side and be an auntie, likely. Um, this is not Daisy. This is where Daisy lives. This is part of her enclosure, and this is her young son, Kanali, who was five years old at the time. Orangs stay young quite longer than other species, than most species. Uh, but at the very end of this video, on the side, stop, freeze. There at the side, you see Daisy in the shade. I painted Daisy in that position um, also. But uh, in the other larger videos, this is Panji and Kanali, and this is, the, this is the larger habitat. So it's on a hill, and it's got bamboo, and it's got trees, although they don't really climb the trees, they, they climb the hanging apparatus. And um, it's quite common that you see uh, material that is like fire hose, or is fire hose, I'm not sure, but that's what they use for the, for the swings and the grab bar. It, it, very, it lasts really long and it gives them good purchase. You see that in chimpanzee enclosures and gorillas and with all of these species, it's, it's a great thing that they go swinging on and hanging on. But anyway, I have no video of Daisy. But Daisy, her favorite place to be was at the glass wall where we came in, the people, we, the human beings came in and went, oh, look, a monkey. And I would say, no, it's not a monkey because monkeys have tails and orangs are great apes. And anyway, Daisy really loved hanging at the glass. I mean, she was just there, face pressed up against it. So we're going to walk through her little painting, the construction of her little painting here. And I made this little grid, which you will see on camera too, but also printed it out so I could help follow it with the video behind. So you can see on the first four images, I'm basically just laying in the foundation, particularly the background. And in this painting, I actually tried something different. I thought, well, you know, her habitat is green and jungly, so I am laying in green and green and green and green and green before I put the um, uh, probably burnt sienna on top of it at the end. Um, but I'm putting it in with a texture and from the side you can see this sort of organic kind of color and it's, it's anyway, you can't see it in the video, I know you can't. So I'm, I'm putting this in and I'm darkening this in and then I, I, the first one I've just drawn in the lines and then I've filled it in and then I've done the base color and then the blue and then the Image number four, I've done the burnt sienna, which is a uh, complementary color to the green, so I'm going to get to black from there. And then the next row across, images five through five, six, seven, and eight. By image six, the background is now set. And by the background being set, it now means that I can begin to have the hairs come over the background, which uh, I could only take them up to the edge of the background in that time. And you can see for seven and eight, I'm now laying in more of the orange fur. 
I'm laying it in texturally, which again, you can't really see on the video, but you can see a little bit in person, but it's, it's very delicate. Rangatan hair is very fine. Uh, and they have this incredible blue skin, and then they have hair all, all of it, but in some places the hair is very sparse. So even through here, which is this bluey area, this blue skin area, there is still very sparse hair and, or fur, I don't know the correct thing. So by the third row across, paintings 9, 10, 11, and 12, and they're not paintings, they're just stages, they're just me taking out my cell phone at the end of a day's work. You can see a nine, I went in and made it much lighter again because I needed, I needed to be able to bring some bright color and it was too dark for bright colors to read bright later. So I'm highlighting it and then in 10 I'm bringing more orange over the areas that I highlighted but not all of those areas and then 12 I'm working on the beard too and uh, I've gone and highlighted again. That's what I mean. It's sort of a seesawing example where I'm going back and forth in this creation of this painting, perhaps more than I do with many others. And then by the last painting in this row, by 12, um, the face you can see has now become much darker. And in fact, orangutans ha do have very deep set eyes and under many lighting conditions you can barely see, the sa see their eyes. The same is true for gorillas and the same is true for um, uh, elephants. I mean many other animals too, but amongst the ones I paint, those are the ones that tend to have the most deep set eyes that I sometimes have to cheat to bring them out so you can see them. So in my last row of paintings here, I'm just fine-tuning and I'm really fine-tuning the hair around the edges where it's being hit by the light and I'm fine-tuning the shadows on the face. You can see the next to last photo in this in this row actually has a greenish cast. I probably photographed it in different kind of light, maybe at night with a totally indoor lighting instead of any outdoor lighting. And the final photo is the one, is the final professional photo shot with a big fancy camera. Um, but just to come in and talk to a couple things about orangutans. So besides all this fur everywhere, which can really vary in color from being a deep magenta through to a blazing on fire orange, depending on the light and the species, um, they also have these little little hairs all over their face and they're very distinct and they're really a part of them and I haven't figured out a way to paint them without painting them yet. But they're very regimented and each hair has like skin around it so you can see it but they're actually quite tiny tiny little things and both the males have it with their big cheekfuls and Daisy has it here. In one of these photos in line I think it happens to be number 11 is when I actually laid in all of this facial hair and then kept it for later. So I, for the most part, use cheap frayed brushes to get my fur. I don't really want to do time by, you know, one fur at a time. The exceptions are whiskers, which I need to just sort of take a thin liner brush and let it fly. And also the hairs along the edge of the, of the here, the ones that are against the black. Um, some of those are done with the cheap brushes, and when I, which I'm just sort of trusting chance that it's going to work out because it's sort of, you do it now or that's it. But then I use my tiny little liner brushes with hardly a bit of paint on them to capture all this wonderful flying now. So anyway, Daisy would love to have you come visit her should you be in Wichita. Thank you very much.